My story begins in February 2014, and I was applying for that job that I'd always wanted. Robots get me excited. I get really jazzed about robot. I, I start to talk really fast, and sometimes I stutter, but I love speaking about robots. And so I was applying for a job where I would help with marketing and PR for robotics education. Now fast forward with me to two and a half years in advance. And I had gotten a phone call from our community manager who had asked me to volunteer as a robotics mentor. And I had denied her several times, and finally she said, hey, listen, I've got this perfect school for you. It's on the east side of town. It's a Title I school. It's an underserved community at Go Valley Elementary, and you would just love it. And you know what? And if you don't like it, you call me back tomorrow and just let me know, and you know, it'll all be okay. So I said, sure, fine. So I go up to her desk, and I pick up my robotics friend here, and I go downstairs, and I'm sitting in my cubicle, and I spent the afternoon trying to learn as much as I could about this robot. And so I walk through the door at Go Valley Elementary on that first day, and as I'm sitting there, I meet these kids, and they're just excited. They're excited to learn about research behind robots and, and how to program and how to code. And as we start talking about all of these things, I can see how excited they are. It's the same fire and passion that I have about other things. And so I was, it was completely contagious, and I, I got swallowed up into this. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want everyone to know about robots. And so several months later, my robotics friend and I, we got asked to be what's called a robotics master mentor. And what that means to be a robotics master mentor, it means that you go out and you teach other mentors who are going to go out and teach more teachers about the world of robotics who are going to further impact more students within the Austin community. And so come back with me to February of 2014 and I'm sitting at my desk and I'm waiting for this meeting with my future potential manager. And as I'm sitting there, I get up, I go to the meeting, shake hands, sit down, and sitting across the table, and that potential manager sits down and says, you know what, Antonio, we really like you as a candidate, but we decided to go with someone else. And I was heartbroken. I, I was devastated. Inside, I, I, was, I was trying to put it all back together, but on the outside, I was like, okay, chin up, you got this. So. I smiled, I lifted my head, and I shook the manager's hand and I said, if you ever need anything, let me know. I'd be more than willing to help. Went back to my desk, several weeks later, my phone rings. And as my phone rings, I pick it up, and it's that same group that I had applied for a job. And they said, hey, Antonio, I don't know what you're doing this summer, but we would love to send you to Vietnam. And I said, really? To do what? They said, well, We'd love for you to go teach robotics. There's an organization we work with that builds school rooms. It'd be awesome. Oh my goodness. I was like, sure, I'd love to do it. So I hung up the phone. I stood up in my little cubicle and I did a little jig. And it was, I was jazzed. I was really, really jazzed. And as I'm preparing all of my paperwork, because I'd, I'd never gone anywhere outside of the country, I needed to get a passport and start applying for visas. And while all of that is happening, I get a phone call from a then acquaintance at the time, a young lady by the name of Nicole. And Nicole, the fun thing about Nicole is, is Nicole actually works on the programming background of this robot. And so she calls me and I'm talking to her on the phone and she says, you know what, my buddy Lillian and I, who also works on the robotics platform on Lego's side, would love, absolutely love to come and meet you in Vietnam. We have to go to India anyways, and so since we're already gonna be on that side of the world, we would love to teach with you side by side. So I said, sure. And so before you know it, there's the band of the four of us, Andy, Nicole's husband, Nicole, myself, and Lillian, and we start talking about what we want to do in Vietnam. And before you know it, there's another organization outside of Cambodia, or pardon me, inside Cambodia that wants to be a part of it as well. And so we know if we're going to travel halfway across this world, we want to leave people with something that they can hold on to, more than just like a robotics pep rally, we want to give them something that's sustainable. And so we started writing curriculum and we came up with a game plan. And while we're on this trip, we created science in a suitcase. 
And science in a suitcase, our goal is just to bring science and technology and engineering and the arts and math and merge all of that together and teach kids and get teachers excited about the world of robotics. And so as we started planning our journey and talking about it, we knew the power of it all. We knew that if we could get kids excited in the world that they imagine and, and the things that they dream about, and we merge that with the logic that comes about in the world of coding or even creating robots or building structures, where you meet in the middle is reality. So as you dream and as you create and the things you learn, we want to give you the ability to make and create. And over the course of the last almost two years, we've been to several countries, India, Cambodia, Vietnam, Suriname. We started, we started having people ask us to become ambassadors and, and a friend of ours named Heidi went to, went to Guatemala. And then of course here locally in Austin, Texas. And so, even though you see me on this stage, the impact overall is that there's several people behind Science in a Suitcase. These are just normal people, everyday people, whose only goal is to give kids hope. And so if you take a look, you see the Miracle Foundation and maybe even some friends that you might even know, and those individuals are, want to tell orphans in India as Austinites and a local organization, they want to give kids hope and let them know that they are not forgotten. Or our friends with IT Corps who want to create a revolution in Suriname by teaching kids how to code. Or our friends in Cambodia with the Ponary Lee Foundation who want to give kids uniforms and bicycles so that they can get to school and build classrooms and give them computers. And the Sunflower Mission that wants to educate kids by building classrooms. And so all of those individuals, what makes them unique is they're normal everyday people that are willing to be a part of the orchestra. Some of them play cello, some of them play violin, some of them play upright bass, and some play the timpani. But when all of those individuals come together and play the exact same song, kids in Vietnam get, get notebooks, and they get pens and pencils, and they're willing to stand out in the rain for an hour and a half to be excited about the opening ceremony of all the potential that they've got. And our friends in Cambodia get excited about rebuilding their country in a, a country that's been so devastated where all of the educated were pushed aside and moved out and even murdered and killed, know that they're building their country from the ground up today. And then you have our friends at our local historic theater, and when they see our pictures online, they call us up and they say, you know what? We would love to bring that magic of what you're doing with robots to the stage. And so let's build a program together. Let's call it RoboArts. And what we want to do is, is we want to take those ideas in the engineering design process because we quickly realize that the storytelling and story writing and songwriting process, they're identical and they run in parallel and they run side by side. And so we want to give kids the opportunity to create their own stories, write their own songs, and act side by side on stage with their autonomous partners. And then our friends at the Miller Cole Foundation who are building computer labs for orphans that would have never had the opportunity. And these kids, these kids are, are walking a new ground to give themselves new life and a brand new hope. I wanna tell you a little bit about my family here. This is my brother and his three kids and his wife. And the two kids on the outside, on the left-hand side is Judah and on the right-hand side is Anton. Now, when this picture was taken, Anton was just finishing up chemotherapy before he had a series of surgeries done. And the interesting thing about Anton is Anton has a skin deficiency called EB. It's where your skin is deficient in the protein that holds your skin to your muscle. And so he has sores and scabs in a very different way than you and I know. And so one day, 
my brother's in the car with my dad, and my dad's grandpa's name is Papa T. That's what he loves to be called. And Anton and Judah are sitting in the back. And as my brother's driving, Anton says, Dad, if you don't mind, slow down as you're driving over these bumps on the road. They're really starting to hurt my backside and really starting to hurt my bottom. And immediately Judah chimes in. And Judah says, Papa T, you know what I want to be when I grow up? And Papa T, slightly confused by the statement, says, I don't know, what? He says, I want to be an engineer. And so my desire is that we impact the next generation of people globally and give them opportunities that they would have never imagined. And you can be a part of that no matter where you're at. You can build your own orchestra. You can play the songs that you want to play. But it takes everyday people like you and me to build and make new systems and to give people hope all over the world. Thank you.